the Velociraptor. Once there was a Velociraptor family. Mummy, Daddy and little Luke. Luke's daddy was strong and brave and everyone looked up to him. But Luke was neither strong nor brave. He was shy and didn't even like to play with the friends of his age. One day, while all the young ones were playing, they started making fun of Luke for being so unlike his father. Upset, he ran away from them. Wandering alone, Luke saw a group of T-Rex moving towards his home. Quickly, Luke rushed in the opposite direction of his home and made loud noises. The T-Rex, confused by the noises, started running in Luke's direction instead. Being little, Luke ran away unnoticed and quickly informed everyone about the danger. Ever since then, nobody made fun of little Luke anymore. They all realized that he was equally special, though he might be different. They all owed their lives to him. Ali learns a lesson. Once there lived an Albertosaurus family, big and strong. Everyone was afraid of them. Ali, youngest of all, thought it was funny to bully others. One day, Ali's father caught him, scaring a little animal. He gave Ali a bad yelling, but Ali yelled back and left the house. Wandering in the forest, he came across a baby dinosaur. He decided to scare her. As soon as he scared the little dinosaur, out came her mother, bigger and stronger than Ali and angrier than he had ever seen anyone. Ali ran for his life, but the angry mother dinosaur followed. Tired, he fell and the angry mother dinosaur caught him. But she did not harm him. Instead, she warned Ali and told him to mend his ways and not to scare anyone. Ali ran back home and apologized to his father. He had learned his lesson. Bullying is a really bad thing. The Uncracked Egg A long time ago, there lived a Megalosaurus family. The small family was about to grow. The mama dinosaur has laid three big eggs and everyone was eagerly waiting for them to hatch. The mama dinosaur never left the nest. She lovingly stroked the eggs and sang melodious songs to them and hoped for her babies to arrive soon. Soon enough, two of the eggs started cracking. Elated, Mama Dinosaur rushed to Papa Dinosaur to share the exciting news. Jumping with joy, they returned to the nest only to be welcomed by the wailings of their two newborns. Though happy, yet the one uncracked egg worried them. Days went by and they started losing hope until one day as they carefully lifted the egg to take it to the dinosaur doctor, it cracked and out came the loudest cry a newborn ever gave, delighting all the dinosaurs around. The Kind T-Rex Once upon a time, there was a T-Rex, Ricky living with his parents in a cave near a lake. Every evening, all the dinosaurs in the forest would come to the lake to drink water. Ricky would rush out the moment he heard others, but each time he approached any of them, they'd run away scared. Whenever others ran away, Ricky would get upset, but he couldn't do anything about it. One day, he went out for a walk. There he saw a young Stegosaurus stuck in a ditch, struggling to escape. Ricky approached to help, but the Stegosaurus shrieked, petrified. Though upset yet, Ricky helped him out using his long tail. Once out, the Stegosaurus couldn't believe a T-Rex saved him. Ricky gave him a warm smile and the young Stegosaurus also smiled back. Ellie and Grandma. Once a family of Brachiosaurus lived in a forest. Other dinosaurs were scared of these giants getting in their homes. So they set traps for them. While on a walk with her grandma, 
Little Ellie came across the small pond. Excited, she wanted to jump right in, but Grandma stopped her and warned, "It could be a trap, Ellie." Disappointed, Ellie went back home, but she couldn't stop thinking about the pond. Before sunrise, Ellie sneaked out. When she reached the pond, she was shocked to see a small micro raptor trapped in it. The pond was indeed a trap, just like Grandma had warned. Crying, Ellie ran back home to get some help. After the rescue, she hugged her grandma and apologized for not listening. Ellie realized that we should respect our elders and always listen to them. Quick-footed buggy. Once there lived a little lesothosaurus named Buggy. Buggy was really tiny but was quick on his feet. Buggy could reach the finish line before others reached halfway. Though fast, yet he was unhappy with his size. Buggy was playing one morning. He saw a hut on fire and many dinosaurs standing around it, unable to get in. With the doors locked, there was only the chimney hole to enter the hut. Immediately, Buggy got an idea. He quickly jumped into the chimney hole to land straight inside. Before the fire could get him, the quick-footed Buggy ran hard and opened the door to the hut. As soon as the door opened, the trapped family escaped and everyone praised Buggy. Since then, Buggy was never ashamed of his size. He knew that he didn't need size or strength to be good. All he needed was the willingness to do so. Acceptance. Once there was a giant iguanodon, Iggy. She lived in a huge forest with many other dinosaurs. A herbivore, all she ate were plants, upsetting her friends since she wouldn't hunt with them. One day they got angry and said, "We don't want to be your friends anymore." This upset Iggy a lot. She decided to change for her friends and be a carnivore. As she attempted to change her diet, she just couldn't eat and eventually fell really ill. Her friends got worried. They couldn't understand what happened until the old forest doctor arrived. The doctor told them, "Iggy is an iguanodon. She is different from you." She needs different food than you. She changed her diet which caused this illness. Iggy's friends felt really sorry. They now understood that everyone is different and should be accepted just as he or she is. The kind Terry on a far away beach a Barry Onyx family was hunting for fish. The youngest in the family was called Terry. She was the kindest dinosaur ever. She'd help everyone with no selfish motive. But her family did not like it. One day, a group of T-Rex attacked the beach. All dinosaurs ran for their lives, petrified. Terry's whole family was in the water when the attack happened, with nowhere to run. They were prepared for the worst. As soon as the ferocious T-Rex approached them, it was stopped by another T-Rex. Both T-Rexes fought and the attack was prevented. But the family couldn't understand the reason. Once safe, the T-Rex reminded Terry how she had helped a young T-Rex once. It was his sister and so he felt compelled to save Terry and her family. That moment Terry's family realized the importance of being kind and helpful regardless of the results. The bird and the giant. Once upon a time on a tall tree lived a pteranodon, Pete. One day a diplodocus was munching on the leaves of this tree when he accidentally disturbed Pete's nest. Waking up startled, Pete requested him to be careful. The Diplodocus laughed it off and continued eating 
and again nudged the nest. This time, Tyrannodon got angry with the giant dinosaur. Their size difference was so huge that the Diplodocus tried to use it to his advantage to scare Pete. But Pete wouldn't take it. Pete flew out of his nest, circled around the giant dinosaur and attacked it with its teeth, injuring it in various spots. The Diplodocus least expected the little bird dinosaur Pete to react this way. Nursing his injuries, he asked for forgiveness, realizing that size was never the deciding factor on who is stronger or more capable. Jealousy always gets you in trouble. One of the most intelligent dinosaurs to have ever walked on the earth were Trodons. Their big brains made them the most sought after problem solvers amongst all the dinosaurs. Trodons were consulted over everything from nest and cave locations to medications and herbs. This made some of the other dinosaurs feel very jealous. So one evening they decided to set a trap to eliminate the Trodons. On a routine walk after a meal, the Trodons came across an area that looked a little off. So they decided to investigate it. Thanks to their stereoscopic vision and intelligence, they figured the trap and saw the jealous dinosaurs hiding close by. By pretending to have fallen for the trap, they let the overjoyed jealous dinosaurs approach the trap themselves and managed to push them all inside instead. Stuck in their own trap, they all begged for forgiveness, having learned their lesson. The New Leader Everyone in the forest decided it was time for him to have one common forest leader. It was decided that a competition would be held and the winner would be declared leader. Scores of dinosaurs decided to participate. Everyone wanted to be the leader, but none knew what the competition would be like. On the day of the competition, they were all asked to fly and get a golden egg from the mountain top. Obviously, not all of them could fly. Amongst those who could, one grabbed the egg and was now the leader. He turned out to be the worst leader ever. Unfair, cruel and selfish. So everyone demanded a rematch. They realized that not everyone has the same talent, which makes him all unique in his own way. And that uniqueness demands respect and appreciation. The tallest ones. The tallest dinosaurs were the Brachiosaurids. They had such long necks that they could browse off the tallest trees and grab the best fruits. They were all shy and quiet. The difference in height made it difficult for them to make friends with other species. So they quietly munched away, ignored by the rest. One day, while grabbing the fruits from the top of a tall tree, they saw from a distance ferocious meat-eater dinosaurs marching towards a group of young dinosaurs playing near a pond. Immediately, they alerted the parents of the young ones and helped them reach safety. When the meat-eater dinosaurs reached the spot, everyone had gone. They went away in search of the next prey. As everyone watched them leave, they came out of hiding and circled around the Brachiosaurids to thank them. The Brachiosaurids were delighted and that day they made their first friends. Kindness over Vanity So far, about 700 different species of dinosaurs are known 
amongst them all, Dinah thought she was the prettiest. One evening, as she walked to the pond to hydrate herself, she came across a group of fat, scaly dinosaurs. She was immediately disgusted at the sight of them. One of them approached her, but she shrieked and ran away. Rushing ahead, Dinah came across a group of large, strong dinosaurs that she deemed fit to keep her company. She warmly approached them, but was insulted and laughed at instead. Dinah was heartbroken and sat there crying as she cried at being rejected by the ones she wanted she was again approached by the dinosaurs she ran away from despite being hurt one of them moved forward to comfort her moved by the gesture dinah realized how unimportant looks are and how important kindness is being helpful a loud crying noise was coming out of a small cave near a lake. Polly lived nearby and was worried about who it was and what might be wrong with. Though scared, yet she decided to check on whoever it was. Carefully, she left her own cave and slowly walked towards the noise. It was the deep part of the forest. Even the moonlight couldn't reach the spot where Polly was walking. She stopped and wondered if it was worth all the risk to help a stranger. She decided to walk anyway. The moment she entered the dark cave, she was shocked to see that the crying was coming from her own sister. Trapped and injured, she had been crying for help. Hugging and kissing, she helped her sister out and made a resolution to continue being helpful. A Good Deed Once upon a time, there was a young dinosaur, Sam. On his way to school, one morning, he noticed a baby dinosaur stuck in a stream. Quickly, he threw a long tree branch and rescued her. Panting for air, the dinosaur thanked Sam. Then Sam was back on his way to school. A few days later, he saw the same baby dinosaur jumping around, yelling, trying to grab his attention. Sam rushed to her immediately and asked what was wrong. She told Sam that a ferocious T-Rex had been following him for days and was about to attack when she made him rush to her side. She told Sam how she had been following him ever since she understood the T-Rex's plan. She took it as her duty to help him since he saved her life. No good deed should go unrewarded. Teamwork One bright sunny morning, a group of young dinosaurs was playing together, running around and chasing one another. Suddenly, one of them fell in a ditch nearby. The poor baby dinosaur tried his best to escape but failed each time and started crying. All his friends tried to motivate him, ordered to try harder, but nothing seemed to work. Each of them gave his best to help him in his own way but failed until one of them had a bright idea. Moving towards the group, she appealed to everyone to work together and attempt the rescue. Together, they devised the plan to hold claws and tails and lower themselves down the ditch until they reached their trapped friend. The plan worked wonderfully. They successfully rescued their friend and realized her problems dissolved quickly when everyone works on them as a team and not individually. Making Friends Anna was an intelligent, kind and shy dinosaur. She had the brightest ideas and 
the most interesting conversations but couldn't seem to make any friends whenever she talked to someone her age he'd get bored because anna talked of things that she read in books but that didn't interest the kids of her age disappointed and hurt anna decided to stop reading new things and sharing them just to make some friends each day spent without reading made anna sadder and sadder until one day while walking past a bookstore she bumped into a little dinosaur carrying anna's favorite book excited anna started asking questions and got all the answers with equal vigor there anna made her first ever friend and she didn't have to change herself a bit nick the prankster nick was a naughty little minmi dinosaur who loved to joke around and prank his family and friends all the time one morning he decided to prank everyone nick got out of his cave and started yelling help help everyone gathered around they left everything to rush to his aid but seeing them stressed nick started laughing and yelled fold you nick's mother warned him not to repeat this again lest he should be trusted when he actually got in trouble nick laughed it all off and repeated the same prank the next day upset his mother tried to make him understand again but all in vain a few days later nick yelled help help he was being chased by a hunter dinosaur but none paid attention somehow nick escaped and went crying to his mother and apologized he had learned his lesson it is wrong to lie The Secret Cave Andy was an Edmontosaurus dinosaur who only ate plants. One evening as Andy munched on some tree leaves, he overheard two petinosaurs perched on a tree nearby. The petinosaurs were talking about a beautiful secret cave in the forest. This cave was blessed with unlimited food, the most perfect weather and the comfiest ground to sleep on the description of this place grabbed andy's attention and he wanted to find out more about the cave without much thought he went to the petinosaurs and asked them directly but the cunning petinosaurs gave andy the wrong directions and sent him off in search of the secret cave andy went into the deepest part of the forest and found a cave that fitted the description overjoyed he rushed inside only to be eaten up by the t-rex who lived there watching from a distance the petinosaurs laughed at how gullible andy was true friendship tom mike and shawn were three stegosaurus dinosaurs who were best friends they did everything together eating playing and sleeping nothing was done away from one another one day the three friends were running around in a field when suddenly a meat eating megalosaurus started chasing them trying to eat one of them the three friends ran hither thither scared for their lives with little hope of survival as tom and shawn reached the end of the field to their shock they saw mike being held by his tail by the hunter dinosaur shawn wanted to rush to his friend's aid but tom wouldn't let him tom suggested that it was wise to let mike meet with his fate and that they should just save themselves shocked shawn turned and rushed to help mike and succeeded in somehow freeing him that day they realized 
who their true friend was and who wasn't. Discovering around, Mrs. and Mr. Dromisio Mimis had a baby boy. That little boy was the cutest baby ever. Tiny and chubby, he struggled to walk and would tumble very often. Every day, he would tumble around and discover new things around his house and surroundings. One fine day, while playing near his house, he found a tub of water and started crying as he looked in it. He would hit the surface with his little chubby hands and cry for his mummy, giving his loudest cries possible. Mrs. Dromisio Mimis wasn't around and the little baby just wouldn't stop crying. Their kind neighbor, Mr. Sauropods, giant and slow, approached the baby. When he saw what the matter was, Sauropods couldn't stop laughing. The baby was scared and hitting his reflection in the water, not knowing it was him. Soon everyone was told and there was laughter and love for the baby all around. Present Before Future Mike and Molly were a newlywed dinosaur couple. They were young, strong and always planning for their future together. One day, Molly's mama dinosaur came visiting. She told the couple to take good care of their things and house. But Molly said they were moving to a better place soon. So she didn't need to care. The mama dinosaur said, take care of your health. Molly said they didn't need to do anything since old age was too far away. The mama dinosaur told them to love and respect each other and enjoy their life. Molly said they had their whole life to do so. They could take it easy. Upset, the mama dinosaur sat Molly and Mike down and made them realize that in their plans for the future, they were not living their present, which is equally important. Two of a kind, Tom and Tim were twin velociraptors. Though they were physically identical, yet they couldn't be more different from each other. While Tom was responsible and caring, Tim was carefree and found responsibilities boring and unnecessary. As monsoons approached, they were to prepare their caves for the downpour before water seeped in and flooded their home. Tom being the responsible one did his work timely, repairing the cave and stocking up in case of flood. Tim, on the other hand, spent the time relaxing and lazing around. When monsoons arrived, it brought flood with it. All around, there was water and no dry land or scope to hunt for food. While Tom was comfortable and helping others, Tim couldn't even fend for himself. Tim learned his lesson for life. Both work and relaxation need to be in the perfect balance for a happier existence. Smart Siblings Once there were three siblings in a young dinosaur family. They lived in a hut on a mountain top. They were all strong kids, learning to be fierce and brave from their parents. One day, the siblings were alone in their nest when danger came knocking at the door. A cruel, ferocious, dangerous looking dinosaur stood at their doorstep roaring its loudest roars. The dinosaur readied himself to attack the young ones and eat them up. But they were brave. They stood their ground and were ready to fight for their lives. While two of them attacked the dinosaur and miserably failed at even scratching him, the third one used his mental powers over physical power and used a tree branch to poke the dinosaur's eye. The eye 
was a soft target and sent the ferocious dinosaur crying in pain. Sometimes smartness is more important than strength. Greed and Evil It was the best time of the year to be living in a forest. There were juicy fruits all around. Everywhere you looked, there was a different fruit, more juicier than the last. Protoceratops were herbivores. Fruits, vegetables and other plant products were all they gorged on. Pip and Pop were Protoceratops dinosaurs and they were overjoyed at the bloom in the forest. All dinosaurs were enjoying the fresh fruits and Pop and Pip didn't want them to have them all. So instead of eating them, they started collecting as many as they could find. After a few days, they checked on all they had collected in their cave, only to realize that the fruits had gone bad. They had been collecting for days and fruits started rotting once they are plucked. Pip and Pop were so disappointed and regretful that they forgot to enjoy the fresh fruits in their greed and selfishness. Greedy Gallimimus Most dinosaurs were massive in size and consumed huge amounts of food. Some of them were herbivores and ate only plant products. Some were carnivores who ate only meat. Still, some were omnivores who consumed both plants and meat. Gallimimus dinosaurs were omnivores, so they ate plants and meat. One fine evening, while a group of Gallimimus was out in search for food, they came across some easy target to hunt. They all planned and attacked together. They kept on catching enough prey to enjoy a hearty meal until they saw a tree laden with fresh ripe fruit. So they started gorging on them. What the group didn't realize was while they plucked fruit, their hunt was being dragged away by other meat eaters. In their greed for more, the Gallimimus forgot to take care of what they already had and unfortunately lost it. Lily learnt a lesson. As little kids, we don't realize how hard our parents work to get us things and we just keep demanding for more. Lily was just one of those kids. She cribbed and cried and demanded thing after thing from her parents. One day she asked for a new dress. The next day she'd ask for a new toy. But one particular evening she demanded a doll that she'd seen someone else playing with. Lily's mummy and daddy loved her very much but wanted Lily to respect what she already owned and not to take it all for granted and throw it away for new things. Lily was disappointed. But she was a smart dinosaur. She understood exactly what her parents meant. In her quest to get the next best thing available, she forgot to enjoy what she already owned. So Lily stopped her old ways and made her parents feel very happy. Snoopy Troubles Mona and Tony were best friends. They always played together and enjoyed each other's company. One pleasant evening, as they played near a cave, they heard some fighting noises coming from the inside and were curious to find out what was going on in the cave. Slowly, they approached the cave, but Mona stopped midway. She reminded Tony about how her mother had once told them both that it was always wise to mind one's own business and not snoop in on others. But Tony wouldn't listen. Curiosity had taken over the best of him and he went closer to the cave alone to find out who was fighting inside. 
As Tony stood on the cave opening, a long tail coiled around him and swooped him inside the cave. Mona rushed to get help, realizing that the fighting noises were nothing but a trap set for Snoopy kids like Tony. Growing up, Bob was a triceratops. He had three huge horns on his face. He lived in a herd and always had someone to take care for him and his things, which made him feel carefree and sometimes irresponsible. On his birthday, Bob was gifted a brand new sharpener for his horns. These sharpeners cannot be bought but are specially made by the elders in the herd and it is a privilege to have one. Bob wasn't a little dinosaur anymore and was growing into an adult who needed to care for himself and his mother expected him to do so soon. One morning, Bob decided to sharpen his horns before heading out. But he couldn't find the sharpener. He looked everywhere but couldn't find it and was almost in tears when his mother brought it to him and made him realize the importance of caring for things to avoid such situations. Ali the Winner Ali was an Apatosaurus dinosaur. She had a long massive neck, a huge bulky body and was relatively slower than all others because of her weight. A herbivore, she never had to chase or hunt another dinosaur and was quite calm and peace-loving. Amongst all her friends, she was the only apatosaurus and her friends had lately started making fun of her for being slow and so humongous. But Ali was undeterred. One day, they all decided to race to declare the fastest amongst the lot and all took part in it. Ali too ran, though slower than the rest, but when it was time for a winner to be declared, Ali was there. With her long neck, she had reached the finish line before anyone else. We should all be like Ali, never letting snide commence dim our light and continue being ourselves. We all will come out winners in our own ways. The Explorer Albert was an adventurous and intelligent Albertosaurus dinosaur. He loved exploring and discovering new places and things. Each morning, he'd look out his cave and wish to climb the snow-capped mountains across the forest he lived in, but would be discouraged by all others. They'd say that it was too hard, too cold or too far. But Nothing could discourage Albert. One morning, he decided to climb the mountains. After days of hard struggle, he reached the mountain top, only to be amazed by what he saw on the other side, a whole new dinosaur civilization. Albert met them all and then returned and informed everyone of the new dinosaurs he met and they all scaled the mountains to do the same. Everyone appreciated Albert and realized that in life, exploration was as important as being comfortable. Embrace what makes you. John T was a Pegomastax dinosaur. He had fang-like teeth and bristles all over his body. A mere two feet, John T was small and his bristles made him look not so pleasing to the eye. Whenever he saw other dinosaurs with perfect scaly bodies and big sharp teeth, he'd want to pull off his bristles but couldn't. He was envious of others all the time. One evening, as he walked home from the darker part of the forest, he felt someone was following him. Sensing danger, he started to run and was soon certain that a bigger dinosaur was chasing him to hunt. Jaunty suddenly stopped and turned to face the danger. And just then, the dinosaur jumped on him. But Jaunty's bristles 
poked the dinosaur everywhere. Injured, he left Jaunty alone and left screaming in pain. Jaunty thanked his features lot. Overcoming Fears Once upon a time, in a deep forest lived a small family of Edmontosaurus dinosaurs. Edmontosaurus dinosaurs were large and strong. They ate just plants and shrubs and lived together in large groups. The youngest in the group, Billy, was a naughty dinosaur who loved to play with his friends. One day, as Billy was playing near a lake, one of his friends fell into the water and was struggling to keep his head above the surface. Billy was scared of water and never used to go near it. But seeing his friend in danger, he jumped right in. After a lot of struggle, Billy finally managed to rescue his drowning friend. Once out of water, the friend thanked Billy and everyone in their large family was filled with pride that Billy overcame his fears and showed immense courage when it was the most necessary. Face Your Fears Abby, a young Albalophosaurus dinosaur, lived near a huge mountain range. Every day, Abby's family would hike the tall mountains in search for food. But Abby never joined them. Scared of heights, she chose to wait at home for her family instead of joining them. One evening, when Abby's family had still not returned, she started worrying. They always returned before sunset, she thought. She waited a few hours and then decided to go looking for them. Reaching the foot of the mountain, she called out, Mom! Dad! But no one responded. Scared and worried for her family, she decided to climb the mountain. Once she reached the peak, she was welcomed by them all. Abby turned around and looked down the range, only to realize that she'd climbed the height and nothing happened. This was her family's plan. They wanted her to triumph over her fear of height. Being lazy. Once there was a lazy dinosaur named Jim. He was a dread notice dinosaur, one of the largest ones amongst the entire dinosaur family. Every morning, when everyone else left his cave for work, Jim would stay in bed, laze around, and sleep more. Every day, while every other dinosaur worked hard and performed his daily duties, Jim stayed in the cave doing nothing. One morning, as Jim slept, the floor of his cave began shaking. Immediately, everything in his room shook hard. Jim was confused and scared, but being lazy, still stayed in bed, refusing to let anything disturb his lazy ways. Suddenly, his cave walls started to fall. The earthquake destroyed Jim's cave and he got buried under the rocks in his bed. Seeing this, the dinosaurs came together to rescue Jim. That was when he realized that his laziness could have killed him and he needed to mend his ways. Grumpy Ollie Ollie, an old grumpy dinosaur, lived in a huge cave near a waterfall. Every evening, dinosaurs would arrive there to hydrate and relax. The massive footsteps and rustle bustle bothered Ollie and made him feel grumpier. One day, he decided to end this problem once and for all. He went to meet some meat-eater dinosaurs and convinced them to attack the relaxing dinosaurs at the waterfall. In return, the wishes group asked Ollie to pretend to be trapped by them lest everyone should wonder why he wasn't attacked. Ollie readily agreed. Next day, after trapping Ollie, the dinosaurs attacked the group at the waterfall. Delighted at the sight, 
Oli demanded to be released. The dinosaurs just laughed and said, "We did what you wanted. Now you'll do what we want. Be our meal." Tearful and guilty, Oli realized how his bitterness got him in the deep trouble he was in. Jane, June, and jealousy. Jane and June were two allosaurs dinosaurs. Though friends, yet they were envious of each other, and each always wanted to be better than the other. One evening, on a walk through the forest, they met a magician dino called Magisaurus. Magisaurus granted Jane and June two wishes, and told them. Whatever you wish for, the other will get double. Excited at first, they both got worried hearing the condition. Yet June decided to demand a cave full of food. As soon as her wish was granted, Jane got two caves full of food. Jealous and unhappy at Jane's happiness, June's ill will took over, and she wished that half her teeth might fall. Just so, Jane lost them all. A shocked Jane lost all her teeth, and June instantly regretted losing hers. They both realized that jealousy had only led to their loss, as well as of others. Living in the moment, Kim, an infant dinosaur, had just. started attending the forest dino school at the school kim was learning new things meeting new people and loving it all one day as she walked from the school to her home she stopped at a small lake to enjoy the beautiful sunset deciding to draw the sunset in her notebook she took out all supplies from her bag just then a big pteranodon flew really close Startled, Kim dropped everything from her hands into the water. Everything was drenched, spoiled, and floating away. Kim just couldn't stop crying. The same Pteranodon stopped by seeing Kim cry. He went up to Kim and apologized for scaring her, and said, "You wanted to capture the sunset in your notebook, and now are missing it by crying over your lost notebook." Value what is there, and never feel sorrow over what is lost," he said, and flew away. Tony the T-Rex. Tony was a young T-Rex dinosaur. He was always jumping around and playing around. One day, as Tony played near a huge dying tree, a strong gust of wind managed to move it, swaying. From side to side, the tree started to fall. Everything happened so quickly. Tony was caught unprepared, and the tree fell on him. Though young and strong yet, Tony was unable to move the massive tree. Injured and out of breath, he soon gave up and yelled for help. An old dinosaur heard Tony and walked up to him. Too old to physically lift the tree, she said. Others can't always be around to help. Find it in you to do what is necessary. Luck favors those who give in their all. Motivated, Tony used all his strength and freed himself. Once free, he thanked the old dinosaur for the life lesson and walked home a wiser dinosaur. Fights that lead to friendship. One summer day, when the great heat induced a general thirst, an Ankylosaurus and a Gorgosaurus arrived at a small well to drink and relax. Large and strong, they both wished to be the first to drink from the well. Soon, they started fiercely disputing over it all. In no time, the fight got physical. Each trying to display his physical prowess over the other. When they stopped to take a breath, 
to continue the fight with renewed strength they saw some huge beak eating dinosaurs waiting in the distance they at once made up their quarrel realizing that the meat eaters would feast upon whoever fell first they decided it is better for us to be friends than to become stumbles food in our quest to prove ourselves physically strong let's not act mentally weak selfish sally sally was a clever little albulophosaurus dinosaur every morning she left her cave to go out in search of food and friends she believed the more friends you have the more you can use them sally made friends with the ferocious t-rexes and also the peace loving soro poseidons and took great pride in it showing it off to everyone she knew one fine day a fight broke out between the two groups and both asked sally to join them and help instead sally jumped from one side to the other never picking one soon truce was made and the fighting stopped sally was delighted she went to the soro poseidon family upset with sally's selfishness they sent her away with harsh words sally then went to the t-rexes furious at her behavior they attacked her and said if you can't pick sides you stand nowhere saying these words they gobbled her up always give your best once in a far away forest lived a small dinosaur family a dino mom dino dad and their darling little dino dan dan was a curious dinosaur he always wanted to know more so he always had a lot of questions about everything everyone appreciated dan for this quality one morning as dan looked out of his cave he saw a group of dinosaurs rushing somewhere curious he followed they all reached an open field with a humongous rock in the middle and a dinosaur called rick as small as dan was pushing it rick was moving the rock and everyone was looking at him amazed surprised and full of questions dan waited for everyone to leave and then asked rick how he achieved the impossible rick said whatever you do do it with all your might and nothing can stop you impressed dan made a note to follow this in life never be greedy barney a little rat baby dinosaur woke up one morning and realized he was home alone excited by the very idea of not being attended by any older dinosaur he grasped the opportunity with both hands and started with his mischief he managed to lay his hands on a big jar of cookies that his mother always hid from him eager to have them all he grasped as many as he could but when he tried to pull his hand out he couldn't because of the narrow opening of the jar little barney didn't want to lose any of the cookies so he tried again but failed after trying many times he lost patience and began crying just then his grandfather walked in and seeing everything he said learn to limit your greed and never let it overshadow good judgment and common sense then you can achieve it all never hurt someone for fun one pleasant evening suddenly woken from deep slumber by sharp pain on his scales and horns abid the kentrosaurus dinosaur looked around and wondered what caused the pain looking towards the sky he noticed a group of microraptor dinosaurs flying around pointing at him 
immediately he realized what was going on they were all playing around and competing with one another by pranking a bit each micro raptor circled around and then flew down to pull a bit's horns and touch his scales with his beak but each time they did that for fun a bit suffered a lot of pain unfortunately one of a bit's horns broke and blood oozed out he said to you all this may be fun and games to me this is only pain never hurt someone for fun guilty and having learned a lesson for life the micro raptors apologized and flew away the company we keep and old town was infamous for notorious dinosaurs who were disturbing the peace with robberies and thefts greg a young dino recently moved to the town to set up his shop unaware of the unruly gang of dinosaurs he became friends with them the innocent people of the town started growing wary of greg assuming him to be part of the gang one night suffering from high fever greg couldn't find medicines at home so he went to his neighbors to seek help since everyone thought him to be a part of the gang he got scared and didn't respond to his painful plea greg couldn't find help anywhere and struggled through the night next morning a doctor gave greg medication and wisdom he said a dino is known by the company he keeps people didn't help you because of your friends always choose your friends wisely greg had learned a lesson for life better late than never in a small village lived a family of diplodocus dinosaurs demi the breadwinner of the family worked very hard to take care of them all but no matter what she did how hard she worked how little she asked for in return her family was never appreciative of her efforts beat her parents or her siblings they never did anything for her but always asked demi for new things and favors one day demi felt sick and for weeks she had been bedridden slowly the family savings finished and so did the food in the house with demi unable to work they all realized just how dependent they were on demi's single-handed efforts guilty and apologetic they had an all new appreciation for everything she did happily demi's mother declared sometimes it may take longer to identify a gem but it is always better late than never the lazy dinosaur one fine sunny day in winter a lazy dinosaur was mindlessly roaming around the forest he was very very hungry not having eaten anything since the previous night he looked about to find something to eat suddenly he saw a group of dinosaurs carrying food to their caves to store and savor he went up to them and asked can you please give me something to eat i haven't eaten anything since yesterday i am starving one of the dinosaurs asked him what were you doing the whole summer why didn't you store food for the winter ashamed the dinosaur replied Honestly I lazed around and procrastinated the summer away the group chuckled and remarked then starved the winter away the lazy dinosaur pulled a long face and walked away thinking it is true that hard work has no substitute wickedness once a carnotaurus dinosaur was roaming around in search of prey he came near a large group of gallimimus dinosaurs while planning to hunt one of them 
he got a wicked idea. He thought of killing one and then using its skin to cover himself up and living with Gallimimus dinosaurs, pretending to be one of them. Then he could eat them all. All covered up with the skin, he entered the group. He hid around for a day or two and then one day he prepared for the hunt. But he noticed all the dinosaurs were running scared. Confused at the mayhem, he looked around and noticed a huge Tyrannosaurus chasing the group. The Tyrannosaurus immediately spotted the Carnotaurus, mistaking the disguised Carnotaurus for a healthy looking Gallimimus, he gobbled him up. Wickedness is its own punishment. The Carnotaurus wanted the Gallimimus as his meal, but himself became one. Evil Nate Once upon a time, there lived a dinosaur, Nate, so old that he was unable to step out of his cave to hunt anymore. Famished, he kept thinking about how to get food without leaving the cave. And at last, he had an idea. He decided to pretend to be ill. And those who came to inquire after his health would become his prey. Nate put his wicked plan into practice and it worked. So many of his well-wishers came to see him and became food. One by one so many dinosaurs were disappearing from the forest. Everyone thought that he should consult old Nate. Age would have made him wiser with experience. Maybe he could help. Once inside the cave, they saw the remains of all the missing dinosaurs. Realizing what was going on, they hacked Nate to death. Evil is short-lived and never yields good results. Cunning Iggy Once there was a blind old dinosaur who lived near a dinosaur orphanage. The kind dinosaur used to gather food for the orphans and feed them in her cave. Near the cave lived a cunning iguanodon dinosaur, Iggy. Every day she looked at the orphans being fed and felt envious. She decided to dupe the blind dinosaur and pretend to be an orphan. No one suspected anything foul until one day some iguanodons were passing by when they spotted Iggy. Thus, unfolding Iggy's lie in front of everyone. Hurt at being fooled, the orphans beat Iggy up, forcing her to run away. Running for her life, she went straight to her own brethren, the Iguanodons. But they already knew everything, so they refused to accept someone so evil. Forced to flee, she became a wanderer. But she learned her lesson not to pose what you are not because affectation seldom works. The Jealous Dinosaur Mike, a Majungatholis dinosaur, lived alone in a large forest. Every morning he'd head out in search for food and each evening he'd spend hours hunting for a place to sleep. One morning, waking up in his makeshift home, Mike saw two adult Malovisaurus dinosaurs slowly walking to a cave and an old dinosaur coming out with food for them. For days, he noticed the routine. Immediately, Mike felt jealous of the two. He went up to the Malovisaurus dinosaurs and said, It is unfair that you both get fed by that kind dinosaur without making any efforts. You are lazy and privileged. Large and tall, the dinosaurs bent their long necks in the direction of Mike's yelling and said, What seemed privilege to you is a need. We are blind and can't hunt ourselves. You are too hasty to envy the conditions of others not seeing your own privileges.
the double cross the friend once upon a time two young dinosaurs sam and cam went out into the forest together to hunt for food they made an agreement to divide the hunt equally they hadn't proceeded too far into the forest when they met a large dinosaur cam sneakily approached the dinosaur and promised to trap his friend sam for the dinosaur to gorge on but if and only if he would pledge his word that cam's own life should be spared on his assuring cam that he would not be injured sam was led to a deep pit and everything was contrived in such a way that he should fall into it the large dinosaur seeing that sam was trapped in the pit immediately clutched cam's neck and then attacked sam at leisure he chuckled to himself and said how naive of a traitor not to accept treachery and he nibbled on his hunt the fighting friends a jobaria a minmi and an oviraptor dinosaur were the best of friends ever since childhood they did everything together but being different types of dinosaurs with different habits and different needs they sometimes clashed one such day jobaria a plant eater and oviraptor a meat eater were fighting over what their minmi friend should eat jobaria insisted on plants whereas oviraptor insisted on meat one day minmi ate just plants and on the very next hunted for meat when their fight got intense they wouldn't let minmi eat what the other one suggested so jobaria would hide the meat and the oviraptor would prevent minmi from eating any plants unfortunately all this meant starvation for the poor minmi eventually minmi got unwell because of the days of starvation she realized that one day one may have nothing to yield if one yields to everyone's desires mike and molly mike and molly were two minim dinosaurs both were cousins and lived together in a huge cave with their families one sunny morning as they both played on a cliff near a wide river mike started a fight with molly over who was better at sports with no one way to prove they decided to turn it into a competition after losing many rounds at different sports one after the other Mike got very angry and pushed Molly hard in frustration. Caught off guard, Molly fell and tumbled away, dropping off the cliff into the river. With the fast flowing water and aggressive waves, Molly was struggling to stay afloat. Panic struck, Mike ran to help her and somehow dragged her out to safety. Realizing his grave mistake, he apologized to his sister. and swore to himself not to lose his temper again and act irrationally like he did the regretful twins carla and curly were twin t-rex dinosaurs in famous for being ferocious and mean meat eaters they both took great pride in being aggressive and bullying everyone one evening as the twins played with their friends in a large open field they got into a fight with one of their old friends proud of their physical superiority they abandoned the verbal argument and attacked their friend injuring her badly as soon as they saw blood coming out of the injury they caused they stopped frightened at what had just happened the twins then rushed to get medical help for their friend and profusely apologized to her once the injury was taken care of the twins asked her if she'd forgive them and be friends again she said we can be friends but 
never be the same. For injuries may be forgiven, but never forgotten. Guilty, the twins walked away regretful. Casey learns his lesson. In a tiny cave in a forest lived a grandpa dinosaur and his grandson Casey. They lived all alone and loved each other very much. Like most dinosaurs of his age, Casey was a little lazy and careless. He'd sometimes not listen to his grandpa and half-heartedly do what was asked. One evening, as both got ready to go out, Grandpa asked Casey to lock the door as they left the cave. Careless and distracted, Casey just ran out, forgetting to lock the door. Upon returning, they found the door wide open and all their stuff stolen. Casey was in tears, but Grandpa calmly said, "What may have seemed like such a small thing to overlook at that time has caused something so huge." as a consequence sometimes small things lead to bigger things good and bad so do everything for it makes a lot of difference and it will innocent daughter one day a father and a daughter dinosaur duo went hunting father dinosaur cast the net and then the duo waited for their catch of the day after some time when they drew up the net they saw a tiny water dinosaur in it taking it out the daughter dinosaur placed it in a basket as soon as she turned the dinosaur begged sweet dinosaur please put me back into the river otherwise i shall die i am very small now but if you put me back i shall grow big and you can catch me again and i'd be more useful to you then convinced the innocent daughter dinosaur put the catch back in the water as soon as it hit the water it turned and yelled you fool you'll never catch me again the father dinosaur told his upset daughter consoling never give up the certain for something uncertain Excess of anything is bad. Once there was a dino school at the edge of the forest. There in a huge field was a massive tree right in the middle where everyone liked to eat together. Every morning the students would put their lunch boxes around that tree and return to savor it together. A cunning mini dinosaur was passing by the school when he saw all the food lying around the tree for days he dropped by steal a box and enjoy it one day he decided to eat from all the boxes enjoying one delicious meal after another soon he was full and sleepy drowsy he decided to take a nap alas the mini overslept and everyone arrived to see all his food gone Hungry and angry they beat up the sleeping mini running for his life he realized that too much of anything is bad no matter how delicious the rude neighbor once upon a time two kind and loving t-rexes decided to get married they invited the whole forest to their wedding The couple was so kind and helpful that everyone showed up. They welcomed everyone, but noticed their old neighbor, the Notoceratops dinosaur, hadn't showed up. A few days after the wedding, worried, they visited the old neighbor and inquired after his health and the reason for not coming to the wedding. The mean old dinosaur said to the couple, "I don't have time to waste at useless events." Like a wedding, I have better things to do. Hurt and angry, the couple told the old dino never to talk to them, and they would never be kind to him again. For he might be honest, but it was so hurtful 
that it shouldn't have been said and then they stormed out of his house don't blame others zoe was a young dinosaur who had just started going to school she loved it there every moment spent in school amongst friends learning something gave zoe great pleasure one day on her way to school she passed by a beautiful garden full of colorful and pretty flowers zoe couldn't control the urge to pick one but being a good child she looked around for someone to seek permission from finding no one around she plucked the flower but the moment she did so a yelling dinosaur came out of nowhere followed by an older one scared zoe dropped the flower and apologized profusely the older dinosaur smiled and replied if i didn't want anyone plucking my flowers i should have put a sign about it it's not your fault it's mine and i never blame others for my own faults you can take as many flowers as you like clever tony tony was a clever and cunning dinosaur one day he went to a neighboring dinosaur city for some work there he went inside a hotel famished but completely out of cash having had a spill he stood on a table top and announced i challenge everybody present here that none of you has ever seen a dinosaur with its tail where its head should be Everyone thought that he was bluffing. One dinosaur got up and said, "It's impossible. If you show us, then I will give you money." Tony took them to the forest where he had tied two of his friends in such a way that one head was where the other's tail was. Everyone laughed, having understood how clever Tony was. The dinosaur happily gave him money. Enough to pay the bill and have a drink too blind imitation is bad in a dinosaur school in the forest younger ones from all dino families would come together to learn starting from the ferocious t-rex to the calm and peace loving vegetarian diplodocus All dinosaurs would coexist in the school, never fighting or hunting one another. One day, the teachers asked each of them to tell others what made him different and special. One after the other, the dinosaurs got up and revealed their special qualities. Then, a Spinosaurus, Spiky, got up and told everyone how he could live in water and on land. Then he dived into the river nearby to show everyone some stunts. Impressed, some dinosaurs jumped in to imitate Spiky, but not all could swim, and soon they struggled to stay afloat. Panic-stricken, the teachers rescued all their pupils and then told them, "Never blindly imitate someone. Always use better judgment before taking the leap." hoping for the best once a dinosaur sue was roaming around the forest looking for food suddenly she saw a t-rex sharpening her nails and teeth with a piece of rock sue looked about carefully but couldn't see any danger for the t-rex anywhere despite being so clever she couldn't understand why the t-rex was doing that unable to control the urge to ask she went up to the dinosaur and said you are so strong and powerful that everyone is scared of you no one dare attack you you don't even need sharp teeth one powerful stroke from you is enough to knock someone out then why are you sharpening them the t-rex replied so we live in a forest where enemies are everywhere who knows when i'll need my sharp teeth and nails one should always be prepared for the worst and hope 
for the best. Always speak the truth. One evening, Aki was home alone. To pass time, he went into his parents' room and started looking around for interesting things to play with. Aki found an old pen in his father's closet and proceeded to search for paper to write on. As he attempted to write with the pen, it didn't work. Aki gave it strong jerks, but it still wouldn't work. Then he decided to open the pen to see what was wrong with it. In his attempts to open it up, he accidentally broke it. Aki thought he'd get in trouble, so he hid the pen. Soon his parents returned. Immediately Aki went to his father, crying. He revealed the series of events. His father stroked his head and said, "Always speak the truth, no matter how hard it may be. I am proud of you." Results of evil. Once there lived an old dinosaur. She had a huge alarm clock. The alarm clock used to ring loudly and tell her the time. Every morning the alarm clock would ring to wake the old dinosaur up and then she would wake her grandchildren up. The grandchildren got very upset at the alarm clock. Because of that clock their grandma would wake them up early in the morning. They devised a plan to get rid of the clock. So one day they completely shattered it. Now grandma dinosaur had no sense of time. She would often wake them up in the middle of the night or sometimes forget to wake them up at all, leading to missed meals and confused days. The grandchildren repented their evil actions severely. Gift for a kind heart. Once upon a time there lived a dinosaur family in a small cave. Though they were all hard workers, yet they were very poor. One day, the youngest, Ron, requested for a cycle. Unfortunately, it was unaffordable for the family, and they told him so. Disappointed and sad, he went for a walk. During this walk, Ron heard a loud cry and rushed to the spot. There he saw a dinosaur crying in pain. Someone had hit him. The dinosaur was bleeding and to help it stop Ron tore his shirt and tied it around the wound feeling better the dinosaur said to Ron I know your financial condition yet you tore your clothes to help me you are so kind then he pointed at his cycle and said I want you to have it as a token of my appreciation Kindness should always be rewarded. There's the right time for everything. Once a baby dinosaur went for a bath to a river. Underestimating the depth, he went in too deep and the water lifted him off his feet. Sensing danger and losing control, he started shouting for help. A dinosaur couple was passing along the path close by. When they heard the baby dinosaur's cries for help, they rushed to the spot. But instead of jumping into the water or getting help, the couple started scolding the dinosaur for getting into trouble because of his carelessness. Drowning, he kept crying for help, but in vain. A young dinosaur saw everything. and immediately jumped into the river having rescued the baby dinosaur he approached the couple and angrily said there is a time and place for lectures and snubs and this wasn't the right time he needed your help not your snide comments the couple rushed away muttering apologies luke's proud moment Winters had arrived in the old dino town and everyone was surviving on the food he saved up during the summer months. Luke, a middle-aged brachiosaurus dinosaur, had finished his stored food 
and now was wandering in search for more. He bumped into an old friend and asked, Do you know any way I could get more food? I am huge. I need more food than others. Can you help? The friend suggested working at the place he was employed at. They gave food and a place to live in. Excited, Luke agreed. On way to the workplace, Luke asked what the work was. And his friend revealed that they looted traveling dinosaurs. There's never a dry season. Luke said, I would rather starve to death than eat from money made this way. Though hungry, Luke walked away a proud dinosaur. Foolish Friends Once upon a time, Pam, a Parasaurolophus dinosaur, fell ill. So he came to a green patch of land and lay there. Within a day, he became so weak that he couldn't even move. In no time, the news of his illness spread and many of his friends came to inquire after his health. They too were plant eaters like Pam. They stayed around to nurse him. In a few days, they ate all the plants nearby. Not even a blade of grass was left. A few days later, Pam started getting well. Seeing this, his friends decided to leave. But still he was too weak to get up and move about. As his friends had eaten all the plants of the patch and he was too weak to go grazing, he was starved to death. Had his friends not been so foolish and thought about things wisely, he would have lived. Live and let live. Once there was a big pool in a dinosaur town. All the dinosaurs in the town would use the water of the pool to drink and for all other purposes too. That pool was full of small dino fish too. Once a shrewd dinosaur decided to fish in the pool. He cast his net into the pool and sat on a side very impatiently. Unable to wait, he tied a long string to a small stone. Then, putting it into the pool, he began to stir the water in order to derive more catch into his net. A dinosaur saw him do so and asked him not to make the water muddy. But he wouldn't listen and went on beating the water, making it dirty. The dinosaur brought some of his friends and threatened him. Either you live and let live or we teach you to. The dinosaur dropped everything and ran. Rich and Poor On a high mountain, there was the renowned saintly dinosaur. Many dinosaurs made the efforts to climb the mountain to visit him and get his blessings. Once a rich and greedy dinosaur went up to him and offered him a lot of gold. The saint refused to accept the offerings and said, I don't accept money from those who are poor. Surprised, the dinosaur replied, But I am very rich. Don't you wish to earn more money? Asked the saint. Yes, said the dinosaur. Those who wish for money always run after it. They can go to any length to acquire it and they never stop. No one is so poor as such dinosaurs, said the saint. The rich dinosaur felt ashamed and never felt poorer. He went back home, swearing to less greedy and rich in the true sense. Fate follows you everywhere. Once upon a time, a dinosaur met with a terrible accident and lost one of her eyes. With just one good eye left, she found it difficult to see anyone approaching her from the side of the bad eye. Being a small dinosaur, she was always afraid of the meat-eating dinosaurs who hunted her daily. So, to avoid danger, she always used to feed on a high cliff near the sea with her sound eye looking towards the land. But this means she could see whenever someone approached her on land and 
soon escaped by this means. Soon the dinosaurs found out about her bad eye. They devised a plan and swam in the sea to land under the cliff where she used to feed and attacked her from her blind side. Ah! cried she with her dying voice. One can never escape one's fate. Never boast of. Once there lived a little dinosaur named Rocky. He was energetic and brave. Rocky was always eager to try new things and never stopped trying. He had an undying spirit and believed that anything was possible. Dinosaurs slightly older than Rocky used to poke fun at him. Once they pointed at a river and asked Rocky if he could drink up all the water in it. Confident and eager, Rocky agreed. Immediately Rocky jumped into the river and started drinking the water. Many dinosaurs gathered around and asked him to stop. But Rocky wouldn't listen. Without any rest, he drank and drank until with a loud noise he burst. Dinosaurs around could only be sad and teach their own little ones. Yes, being confident and attempting even the hardest task is the right spirit. But one should always know one's limit. Boastful T-Rex A half terrace dinosaur was flying around in the sky, enjoying the beautiful sunrise when suddenly he heard commotion in the forest. He flew closer for further inspection. A ferocious T-Rex was surrounded by a group of Deinonychus dinosaurs. Harboring an old enmity, they were in the middle of a fight. When the T-Rex said, You can't do anything to me. Only my own teeth can tear my skin. Nobody else's. What the T-Rex thought was a good time to be boastful turned out to be his biggest folly. The Deinonychus aimed at the T-Rex's teeth, now attacked from everywhere and successfully broke enough of them to attack him together, breaking his skin at multiple places. Injured and tired of fighting, the T-Rex cried, alas, as it died. We often give our enemies the means for our own destruction. One cannot have everything. Once there lived a Confucius Sornus dinosaur, Carl. Carl had the most beautiful feathers that made him look very attractive. Every dinosaur was always appreciating and complimenting Carl, but he never paid any heed to it all. Carl was unhappy. He looked at others and wondered why he didn't have a large stature or sharp teeth. He always wanted what the other dinosaurs had. Unhappy and envious, one morning Carl perched upon a treetop and started crying over all he wished he had but didn't. Suddenly a petinosaurus sat next to him and said, You can fly, you look beautiful, you are fast and you get the best view of the forest and beyond. Can you imagine a T-Rex or an Elasmosaurus do? Carl suddenly realized how special he was. He understood how he couldn't possibly have everything, especially when he was already blessed with so much. Saved by the sun Sally was a curious explorer, just like her dino dad. Together they would hike and trek all over the forest area. One day, little Sally decided to explore on her own as she walked around. Marveling at the tall trees, she noticed that it was getting dark and she should rush home. Turning around, Sally realized that she was lost. She didn't know which direction to go in. Immediately, she started roaring for her mom and dad. But 
no one could hear her wiping away tears she looked around for the setting sun and thought the sun sets in the west and i see it from my window so i should walk in that direction as she walked towards the west she saw familiar trees and rocks and then her home she hugged her dad and thanked him for teaching her to pay attention to surroundings quick stand and quick thinking once upon a time two dinosaurs were racing in the forest to see who could zigzag around the trees and rocks the fastest as they ran and laughed enjoying themselves suddenly one of them slipped and fell into some muck covered in dirt and muck they laughed louder until he began to sink in it wasn't ordinary muck it was quick sand and the dino's life was in danger immediately his friend sprang into action and said calm down i'll get you out with quick thinking and resourcefulness he started collecting branches and leaves and everything strong he quickly made a long rope swung it towards his trapped friend and then tied it to a tree nearby with all his might he then pulled his friend to safety swearing to be more careful and paying attention to their surroundings they walked home having escaped danger greg's tale once there was a gorgosaurus dinosaur greg he lived in a forest with many other dinosaurs greg was a ferocious one with teeth so sharp that the moment he bared them all small dinosaurs could hide one day as greg chased prey he ran as fast as he could while passing through a tree his tail got stuck between two large branches stopped with a sudden jerk greg struggled to escape from the tight hold a group of baby dinosaurs was playing nearby seeing the ferocious greg stuck they started making fun of him jumping and jiggling their little tails at first greg couldn't control himself and joined the younger ones in the dance jiggling his stuck tail suddenly the branches lost their hold and greg's tail was free seeing him free all the baby dinosaurs ran away and greg sprinted home laughing at the silliness greed recipe for loss once a dinosaur was roaming in the forest in search of prey luckily he saw a delong dinosaur sleeping under a tree he was delighted to get an easy meal the dinosaur was about to spring at the sleeping delong when he caught sight of a gasparinisaurus dinosaur passing by he decided to go for the bigger prey for a full meal so he chased the gasparinisaurus but failed to catch it disappointed he gave up and returned to where the delong dinosaur was reaching there the dinosaur saw that the delong had gone as it was getting dark it got difficult for the dinosaur to look for another prey so he had to remain hungry had i settled for the delong i would not be starving right now greed causes loss of what we already have murmured the sad dinosaur trying to sleep unused treasure once upon a time there was an old miser magyarosaurus dinosaur he had a lot of treasure and used to hide it at the foot of a nearby tree but every day he'd go and dig it up and gloat over it all one day a thief dinosaur noticed this he dug up the treasure and disappeared with it when the magyarosaurus returned to gloat over his treasure he found nothing but the empty hole he beat his tail scratched with his paws and 
raised such an outcry that all other dinosaurs gathered around. The Magyarosaurus told them how he used to come and admire his treasure. When did you last use any of it? One dino asked. Never, said he. I only came to look at it. Then why cry? Just go and look at the hole, said a dino. It will do you just as much good. The Daydreaming Polly Once upon a time, there was a dinosaur family living in a dino village. Mummy Dino used to make different items to be sold in the market. Just like every day, Polly got ready and went to her mother. That day, Mummy Dino had made paper toys. Excited, Polly put them in her basket and left. On her way to the market, she thought, I will sell all the toys and buy myself new storybooks and delicious things to eat. Soon, Polly reached the market and set her basket down. A strong gush of wind blew the toys out of the basket. Polly rushed after them but couldn't catch any. Polly returned home. Crying, she said to her mummy, I couldn't sell any of the toys. The wind ruined them. I can't buy anything now. Smiling, Mummy Dino said, Do not count your chickens before they are hatched. Bobby learns to run. Bobby was a young dinosaur, still learning to stand. Every day, his Mummy Dino would try to teach him something new. And he'd eagerly learn it all. One day he saw Papa Dino chase prey. Bobby was surprised at how fast Papa Dino was. He resolved that he'd run equally fast from tomorrow. Early morning, as Mummy Dino taught him how to walk, Bobby attempted to run. Days went by and Bobby still couldn't walk. Running like Papa Dino seemed out of question. Frustrated, one day he cried and complained to Mummy Dino. I wanted to run like Papa, but I can't even walk. Mummy Dino smiled and said, Bobby, everything is a process. Don't skip important steps to get ahead. It will only get you stuck. Walk and then run. Bobby listened. The next day, he was walking and in no time, he was matching his four paws with Papa's. Be true to yourself. Marcy was a wise old dinosaur. She was so old that she had witnessed the birth of almost all dinosaurs that were living in the forest with her. In all her time on the earth, she had met many dinosaurs, but none as unhappy as Marge. Marge was a T-Rex, one of the strongest and most ferocious dinosaurs ever. But Marge didn't like being known for such qualities. She wanted to make friends and be kind to all. Marge and Marcy were great friends. One morning she told Marcy, Because of my precursors, I am stuck, being ferocious and mean. I hate it. Wise old Marcy said, Marge, your actions define you, not your past or your family. So, be friendly instead of ferocious if that is what you want. Just be true to yourself and all else will fall in place. Inspired, Marge changed her ways for better. Parents Love Monty and Jaunty were two little dinosaur brothers. They were both mischievous but good dinos and their parents loved them very much. But Monty always thought that their mother loved his brother Jaunty more. He always had complaints like Jaunty got a bigger piece or you always let Jaunty do it and never me. Each time he said so, Mummy Dinosaur felt bad but failed to make him understand that they were both 
the same to her. One day, a fire broke out in the forest. Monty and Jaunty got trapped in it. Mummy Dinosaur jumped in and rescued her dino babies. Monty noticed how his mummy risked her life not only for him but also for his brother. She didn't think twice about whom to rescue first. Monty apologized to his parents and they said, Always remember, parents love all their children equally and always more than themselves. Greedy Tyler Tyler was a triceratop dinosaur. One evening he hunted prey and was carrying it home in his mouth to eat it in peace. But on his way back home, he had to walk over a fallen tree lying across the deep river. As he crossed, he looked down and saw his own shadow reflected in the water beneath. Thinking it was another triceratop with another piece of meat, Tyler made up his mind to have that also. Roaring his loudest roars, he made a snap with his sharp teeth at the shadow in the water. Just as he opened his mouth, the piece of meat fell out, dropped into the water and was never seen again. Deeply disappointed at the loss of his dinner, he realized how the greed for more made him lose whatever little he had. Having learnt his lesson, Tyler began hunting for another prey. The Dino Siblings Adi enjoyed messing with his little dino sister Dip all the time. He would pull her tail, make faces at her and pinch her randomly. Dip would cry and complain to their parents. One day Dip got really upset and hid from Adi in the forest. But there she lost her way. Not seeing Dip for so long got Adi worried and went about looking for her. Worried about his little sister's safety, Adi took a sigh of relief when he spotted Dip sitting on a rock crying. He ran up to her and tightly hugged her. In that moment, Dip realized that notorious Adi really loved and cared for her, but messed with her just for fun. She decided not to complain to their parents again. Since siblings may fight, but they love each other and should stick together as a team always. Overconfidence is harmful. In the middle of the forest, a group of dinosaurs was huddled together. On approaching the group, it was visible that they were surrounding a fellow dinosaur, Mike the fastest runner in the forest. While everyone was warming up for the race that was to begin soon, Mike laced around. A dino asked, Why aren't you preparing? Mike laughed and said, I don't need to. I am going to win anyway. Soon the race began. Mike, being the fastest, was ahead of every other participating dinosaur. But soon, he started to run out of breath and slowed down. Other dinosaurs overtook Mike and ultimately he lost. Unable to understand how he lost, he sat under the shade of a tree when the winner came up to him and said, You let overconfidence overpower your confidence and talent. Never stop working hard, lest a winner should turn into a loser. Looks can be deceptive. Fred was a Fabrosaurus dinosaur, a herbivore. He enjoyed eating ferns and other vegetation. Fred was a small dinosaur, but he was fierce and knew just how to use his sharp teeth in defense. Once a pair of Geranosaurus dinosaurs spotted Fred munching on plants near their cave. They rushed towards him and threatened him of dire consequences for eating their plants. Fred politely apologized and said, These plants are neither yours nor mine. 
so you can't stop me from feeding on them the giranosaurus dinosaur whispered he is so tiny we can easily beat him let's attack fred jumped out of their way and tried to make peace but the pair didn't listen when they charged again fred attacked too he dug his sharp teeth in the neck of one of the giranosaurus dinosaurs squirming in pain they ran yelling but he looked so small and harmless help those in need a wide river passed through the middle of the forest around the time the sun set each evening every dinosaur in the forest could be found there relaxing one evening as the groups of dinosaurs crowded the river a little dinosaur baby found herself separated from her family weeping uncontrollably she stood close to a tree calling out for her mother megan and maya saw the little one and rushed towards her megan a brachiosaurus dinosaur lifted the baby and placed her on the top of her long neck and said now look for your family the baby looked around and spotted her father at some distance immediately all three of them rushed towards the family and met baby dinosaur's father everyone thanked megan and maya and they said to help one just needs the desire to do so nothing else is so important sweet rose rose was a sweet and caring brachiosaurus dinosaur she would go out of the way to help everyone her family warned don't be so naive people may take advantage of your helping nature but rose was unperturbed by the warnings one day a t-rex was howling in pain right outside rose's cave nobody approached to help thinking that the ferocious t-rex was acting just to dupe him into becoming his lunch despite warnings rose went to the t-rex she noticed a prickly thorn poking out of his eye immediately she pulled it out relieved of the pain the t-rex explained i have short forelimbs it couldn't reach my eye and no one else came to help because i look dangerous rose smiled and told all dinosaurs around them looks can be deceptive give everyone a chance we all are more than our looks independent step step was a young dinosaur living in a huge cave with her parents from the moment step woke up in the morning to when she went to bed again step was catered by someone or the other never having to do even a single thing herself one afternoon finding herself all alone in the cave step began to cry loudly hearing her cries an old neighbor rushed in and asked what's wrong sobbing she replied i can't get out of my room the door isn't open surprised the old dino opened the door for her and stayed with her until her parents arrived then he said to them steph is spoiled she feels someone will always be there to do things for her so she doesn't even try sometimes it's best to guide instead of giving everything so the little dinos are never dependent on someone else the strength of unity for days greg a giganotosaurus was seen lurking around the small community of gravitholus dinosaurs in the forest greg was always on the lookout for an opportunity to hunt one of the gravitholus dinosaurs but each time they noticed him approaching they'd come together in a huddle so an attack from any side of the huddle could be tackled this strategy worked and greg left defeated and hungry each time one day an 
argument erupted in the Gravatholis community and everyone decided to go his separate ways. That afternoon, when Greg approached the community, there was no huddle, no group protecting one another. Delighted at the sight, Greg devised a plan and attacked the Gravatholis dinosaurs. One after the other, he hunted the entire community. Having lost their strength and prowess, they lost their lives, forgetting that there is no strength greater than that of unity. Eva the Bully Eva was a Stoxosaurus dinosaur living in a small cave in a huge, lush green forest. The whole forest was full of dinosaurs of different types. And Eva, being a big dinosaur, bullied other smaller dinosaurs. One day, as Eva went out looking for a victim, she came across a small group of baby dinosaurs playing in an open field. Stealthily, she approached them, waiting for the perfect opportunity to attack. As Eva observed the dinosaurs, she decided to come out. As soon as she did so, she was shocked to see that none of them were scared. Eva tried again, but failed. They continued to play. Embarrassed, she left them alone. Immediately, the baby dinosaurs laughed and said, our teacher, Mrs. Dino, was right. Bullies go away if we pay no attention to them. And they resumed their play. Bravery from a distance Adam and Alan were very good friends. Being young Stegosaurus dinosaurs, they were both big, had spiky backs and were very strong. But were very different. While Adam was brave and was always prepared for any situation or any danger, Alan was timid and liked avoiding tricky situations. One morning, both dinosaurs left their cave to hunt for prey. They came across a ferocious dinosaur ready to attack them. Alan was frightened while Adam prepared to fight. Alan stepped behind his friend. Standing behind his friend, he started instructing Adam on how to attack and defend. Irritated, Adam moved aside and let Alan face the attacker. Petrified, Alan ran away. Adam defended himself well and escaped the attacker. Once back home, he said to Alan, It is easy to be brave from some distance. Real bravery is seen when you face danger. Quality is better than quantity. Alice and Eva were two neighbors. Being herbivores, they had similar diets, feasting on plants and other vegetation. But they couldn't be more different in every other way. Well, Alice was a big and tall Roitosaurus, Eva was a very small Bagaceratops dinosaur. One morning, as Alice and Eva left their caves in search for food, they came across a line of trees laden with juicy fruits. They noticed that most of the fruits had already fallen on the ground and only a few were still on the tree. Excited, Eva started collecting all the fruits from the ground, while Alice picked and chose selected ones from the trees. Eva smirked, I got so many and you have a handful. What are you doing? Alice smiled and said, Your fruits fell. They are rotten already. Mine are still fresh, though few. Quality is always better than quantity. Pick your friends wisely. Charlie and Nancy were two Holticosaurus dinosaurs. Though living in the same house, yet the siblings were very different. One day their mother said, Children, invite all your friends and throw a party in the cave. Excitedly, the siblings informed all their friends. While Charlie had a lot of dinosaur friends, Nancy 
had just a few. Charlie made a lot of fun of Nancy for not having so many friends as he, but she never responded. On the day of the party, all their friends came over, but Charlie's friends made faces at everything in the cave. From the food to the furniture, they started making fun of Charlie and soon left. Nancy rushed to her brother's side and said, "We often forgot of the few true friends in the hope of plenty. Remember, a true handful is better than a parade of frauds. Always pick wisely." Rain dance party. It had been raining continuously for days in Dinoville. Every dinosaur family in the neighborhood was fed up of it. They were trapped in their caves, and the children suffered the most. They didn't want to get wet in the rain, but wanted their playtime back too. After eleven days of non-stop rain, Granny Dino had enough. She stepped out of her cave into the rain. and began dancing immediately she was drenched but enjoyed the rain so much that she couldn't stop dancing peeping from their windows were little dinos amazed at how much fun granny seemed to have quickly they ran to the rain and joined granny amused and delighted at how wonderful the rain felt on their hard scaly bodies The children enjoyed it immensely. Soon all dinosaurs of Dinoville joined in the fun, and a sad rainy day turned into a fun rain dance party. Always be kind. James and Joyce were a loving Labocania dinosaur couple. They both lived in a tiny cave near a lake. and everyone around was jealous of the perfect location of their cave camp a cunning dinosaur devised a plan he went up to the couple and cried hoax that his daughter had fallen into the lake he knew they couldn't swim but would jump in to help when they got drowned he would take the cave james and joyce were ever so helpful and immediately sprang into action James arranged for a long rope and Joyce jumped into the lake to rescue Cam's daughter. Together they looked for hours everywhere but couldn't find Cam's daughter. Witnessing their kindness, Cam couldn't keep up the charade and apologized to them both. They simply said, "Don't apologize, Cam. Our kind efforts helped you abandon your evil ways. That's our gift from you." Now always be kind. Singing in the woods. Sally was a middle-aged Lexovisaurus dinosaur. She had a boring daily routine. From morning to evening, she would be at school teaching little dinos and then would be with her family until bedtime. But when everyone had slept, Sally would sneak out into the thick forest and stay there for hours. Sally's sister Molly noticed this and decided to follow her sister one day. Once the sisters reached the woods, Molly got the shock of her dino life. Sally was singing all by herself. Afraid of the reactions of other dinos, Sally sang melodiously to her heart's delight. Molly was in awe of her sister's talent. Immediately Molly rushed back home, woke her family and neighbors up, brought them to the woods, and everyone heard Sally singing. Once her song was over, everyone cheered, and Sally never had to sing alone in the woods again. The forest fire. Minmi Mutt and George were best friends. They spent all day munching plants. One day a fire burnt all the plants on their side of the river. Hungry and in search of food, they found a bridge that led to the other side, a side ruled by a carnivore named Banjo. Unable to control their hunger, 
the three friends decided to cross the river. Banjo was infamous for eating whoever entered his land, and that frightened the three friends. As they stepped on the bridge, the dry leaves made crunching noise, and immediately Banjo attacked. Minmi and George ran away, but Mutt stayed put. On one side was the ferocious Banjo, and the river flowing on the other. Pretending to recoil, Mutt swung his enormous tail, and Banjo fell into the river. Everyone cheered at the sight, and happily moved to Banjo's side thanks to clever Mutt. John and his tail. John was a careless and bratty dino. He would often carelessly use things and end up breaking or losing them. No matter how much Mother Dino yelled at him, he never mended his ways. One evening, as he cycled around the neighborhood, a kind neighbor pointed out a loose tire in his bicycle. John simply overlooked it and cycled away. Just a few moments passed and a loud crash was heard. The tire broke loose and John crashed into a tree. Hearing the noise, all dinos gathered around. Moments later, the tire rolled down the slope and John followed, running after it and trying to get hold of it. Amused at the sight of a little bratty John running after the tire, everyone laughed and hoped that John had finally learnt his lesson. Mischievous Charles Charles was a mischievous dinosaur. He loved playing pranks on everyone all the time. Sometimes his mischiefs would get out of hand and hurt others. But Charles continued his pranks anyway. One day, Charles' siblings decided to teach him a lesson. So one night, when everyone was in bed, almost asleep, Charles' siblings flicked the lights on off on off repeatedly. The flickering of the lights scared Charles a little and the scary noises made by his siblings completely frightened him. Charles called out to his siblings for help, but obviously none responded. Everyone continued scaring Charles until he started crying loudly, causing mummy and daddy Dino to come rushing in the room. As soon as they entered the kids room, the prank was put to an end. When the lights came on and Charles saw everyone, he realized his mistake, accepted the prank as punishment and promised to mend his ways. Hannah's Bath Time Hannah hated taking baths more than anything else in the whole dino world. She did everything possible to avoid taking a bath, from hiding under the bed to crying her lungs out. She had done it all. One morning, as Hannah's mother ran a bath for her, Hannah decided to climb up a tall tree outside her cave. Hannah's mummy looked everywhere but couldn't find her until a neighbor told her about Hannah's hiding spot. Right below the tree was the shallow end of the lake nearby. Hannah's mummy tiptoed to the tree and shook it with all her might. Caught by surprise, Hannah lost her balance and fell right into the lake, stepping out of the water completely drenched with the grumpiest expressions ever. Hannah's mother couldn't control her laughter and said, since you are already wet, a bath won't hurt. Tricked, Hannah ended up in the bath after all. Always be grateful. It was Chad's birthday morning and he was thrilled, most of all for all the gifts he was about to receive. From morning to evening, Chad jumped around the cave on his little dino legs, asking everyone, what have you got me? Everyone was happy to see the excited birthday dinosaur and were waiting for the evening to give him his presents. In the evening, Chad cut his giant birthday cake and was showered with gifts. 
he opened them immediately a bicycle toys clothes everything made him feel happy then he opened grandma's present and finding a ball in it threw it away disappointed grandma became sad chad realized his mistake ran to her and said i am sorry grandma i know i shouldn't value gifts more than the feelings attached with them please forgive me smiling grandma kissed little chad and appreciated how quickly he learned from his mistake father's watch once timmy took his father's watch without permission and now it was lost nowhere to be found he was really nervous and couldn't stop crying knowing he'd get into big trouble if father found out he was running around in the garden crying and searching everywhere timmy's neighbor fred spotted him and asked what are you doing Timmy narrated his plight and requested for help. Fred agreed but walked around slowly. Disappointed, Timmy continued running around in his search. Slowly, Fred moved from one corner of the garden to the other and then suddenly called out, "Hey Timmy, looks like you were timing how quickly the roses grow." Timmy turned and saw the watch by the rose plants. Relieved, he asked Fred how he found the watch so easily. Calmness is the key, my friend. When you are calm, you can work more efficiently. Tom and Tara sitting at her desk. Tara noticed that little Tom seemed nervous. He looked around and shifted uneasily on his chair. Tara looked down and realized. Tom had wet his pants. She understood that he was afraid of their other classmates finding out. Now Tara was a sweet and caring dino. Tom and Tara were not very good friends, but that didn't mean she wouldn't help. Calmly, she explored all possibilities in her head. Should I tell the teacher or should I talk to Tom or should I turn a blind eye to it? Then she decided on a plan. Sweet Tara poured water from her bottle on the floor and on herself and immediately stood up and exclaimed, "Oh no, I am sorry Tom. I spilled water all over you." Surprised at first, Tom understood everything and gave Tara a big smile and whispered a thank you to her. Shane's lunch box Shane came from a dino family of little means. His parents worked really hard, but money was always a problem. There were times when they would go without one proper meal for days. Unfortunately, today was one of those days. Shane was in school and the bell rang to announce the lunch hour. Shane opened his lunch box to find it empty. Afraid of other dinos finding out, he quickly left the classroom to walk around for the rest of the hour when shane returned to his desk and started putting away his lunch box he noticed it was heavy he opened the box to find an assortment of food items in it shane smiled his widest smile and looked at his teacher she smiled and said just a little bit from each of us gave you a whole a little goes a long way only if we are willing to help the new game sofia and jackson were next door neighbors they used to play together all the time one day they decided to play a new game that required them to stay in their own yards and play through the divider in between sofia sat on one side and jackson on the other and they started the game Within a few minutes they started fighting loud yelling and name calling followed their mothers came out of their caves to check on them seeing them fighting they asked what is the matter sofia said jackson is saying this green box is red but mom said jackson it is really red 
look pointing at the box both moms looked at each other smiled and told their kids even if we are right we shouldn't insist that others are wrong look the box is red from one side and green from the other side storyteller daniel dinoville had seen many wars the dinosaurs in that village respected and loved their soldiers a lot well aware of this fact daniel posed as a war veteran and used his storytelling skills for his benefit every day he used to tell fictitious heroic tales one day daniel told everyone how he lost one eye during a war and needed a fortune to get his eyesight back this story immediately stirred sympathy in dinoville everyone started making huge donations in the form of money and jewelry daniel could finally see his evil plan working after collecting all the donation money he fled from the village the very next morning at dusk the people started gathering around his house waiting for more tales but the wait was futile daniel had already fled and everyone learned the hard way that not every story one hears may be true the good looking danger in dino land appearances were given a lot of importance how you looked decided the amount of respect you received from other dinosaurs dinos respected strong and good looking ones and renounced those who seemed weak and not so good looking a shrewd and cunning dino used dino land's shallow traditions to her advantage she was so good looking that everyone liked her a lot gaining their confidence was easy and soon she started luring them to her cave assuming that she was as good as she appeared the dinos followed little did they know they were her dinner one evening she lured sammy into her cave as soon as he entered the cave he smelled flesh and knew that something was amiss upon investigating sammy found out her ugly truth and escaped her cave to immediately inform the entire dino land shocked everyone now understood how deceptive looks can be sasha's new school a new dinosaur sasha had recently joined debbie's school sasha had a spiky body and sharp teeth she looked pretty dangerous so everyone stayed away from her even after a few months at the new school sasha still didn't have any friends one day as debbie opened her school locker all her stuff fell out of it just then sasha was passing through the corridor immediately she started helping debbie startled at first debbie thanked her one soul her things were sorted and sasha gave her a warm smile in return the next day sasha was invited by debbie and her friends to eat with them and debbie confessed my mom was right we should never judge a book by its cover we assumed you would be mean based on your ferocious looks but you are so warm and helpful and so sasha made her first friend at school pepper's love for food pepper was a huge brachiosaurus dinosaur who enjoyed eating a lot such was pepper's love for food that she found it very difficult to say no to it even if her tummy was full pepper's mother didn't approve of her eating habits and instructed pepper to improve them many times but pepper never listened one day her mother devised a plan she offered pepper something to eat every few minutes and obviously pepper never refused after a few hours pepper had overeaten so much that she started to feel sick sick and uneasy pepper looked at her mother and said i know why you did that mom i know now what overeating can do i promise not to be such a glutton any more mother smiled hugged pepper and said sorry pepper i had to choose the hard way to teach you this lesson 
giving her medicine to get better quickly. Birthday party. Ricky's fifth birthday was approaching and he just couldn't control his excitement. Every day he'd ask his parents about the cake, the gifts and his party. The excitement was such that Ricky started imagining everything about the day. He imagined it to be the best day ever. When Ricky's birthday finally arrived, his excitement knew no bounds. But as the day progressed, he started to get disappointed. Nothing seemed to match his expectations. Ricky's mom noticed his mood and understood what must have caused it. She stroked his head and said, "Often we imagine many scenarios in our head about the future, but we forget how uncertain it is. We get disappointed when things don't go as planned." My dear child, remember not to think so much about the future that you ruin your present. Now, let's enjoy your birthday. Ricky nodded and happily enjoyed the rest of the day. Fancy dress competition. Annual fancy dress competition was announced in Dinoland and everyone was thrilled. All day All the dinosaurs were just about the competition. The rule was the dinosaurs have to act what they dress like. Tanya knew from the start what she would be, but she kept it a secret. Finally, it was the competition day. Everyone arrived in his costumes and performed one by one. When it was Tanya's turn, she was nowhere to be found. The dinos searched everywhere, but simply couldn't spot her when suddenly they saw a tree move surprised every dinosaur turned towards the tree and suddenly out came tanya the moving tree was tanya in her costume everyone laughed and it was decided that tanya should be the winner not only for the great costume but also for the acting she didn't utter a word despite being called out so many times just like a tree Grandma recovers. Summer vacations always meant a trip to the grandparents' town for the little T-Rex siblings, Tori and Rory. They loved their grandparents a lot and enjoyed all the adventures their trips brought along. But that year, when they reached their grandparents' cave, they were told that Grandma wasn't keeping very well, so no adventurous outings were planned. Though disappointed. The kids soon got worried about grandma and decided to do something special for her like she always did for them. Together, the siblings collected household items and began entertaining grandma. The entire summer, the cave was filled with laughter. When the doctor visited the next time, he announced that grandma was getting better than he anticipated, and it all seemed to be because of Tori Rory they realized that they could still help others though they might be little taking someone else's credit Aaron and his friends had been working on a project for a long time they were building a machine to help draw water from the river so all dinosaurs could get water easily months of hard work and Many failures later, one morning when Aaron was attempting to work the machine, it finally did. All dinosaurs gathered around Aaron and looked at the machine mesmerized. Soon everyone began thanking Aaron. Slogans were raised in appreciation, but Aaron stopped them immediately and said, "This machine is not my idea and neither is the execution. It is all a group effort." and i will not accept your appreciation alone one should never accept praise for what he has not done anything aaron's words made him a star in front of everyone's eyes and the slogans of praise continued this time not just for the machine
clumsy Cory. Cory was a clumsy little dinosaur. He would bump into stuff, drop things, and break items all the time. One morning, Cory was told to give a speech in the morning school assembly. He came prepared with a speech, dressed in his finest, and moved towards the stage nervously. As soon as Cory laid his powerful paw on the stage, the stage cracked, and a huge hole opened in the center, and Cory fell into it. All the dinosaurs in the audience stood up and gasped. Seconds later, the sound of giggling echoed from inside the hole. Recovering from the fall, Cory had started laughing uncontrollably. Hearing him, every dinosaur in the audience laughed out loud too. Cory got up, took the microphone, and spoke. It is important to learn to laugh at oneself, so we never take ourselves too seriously, and. Such incidents never dampen our spirit. Bad driver Barry. Most dinosaurs were terrible car drivers. Their short forearms made holding the steering wheels difficult, leading to many accidents. One morning, Barry came out of his driveway in high speed and started too dangerously overtake others, honking continuously. Soon a car came close to Barry's and honked relentlessly, blocking his way and not letting him drive properly. Irritated Barry parked his car on the side. Seeing this, the other dinosaur parked too. Barry then went to the other car and was shocked to see his mom on the driver's seat. Angrily, his mom shouted, "I get so many complaints about you, Barry, that I had to imitate." You, in order to show you what you do wrong, on the road always be considerate of others around you, and don't just think about yourself and your needs. Ashamed, Barry apologized and promised to behave better. Peter's revenge. Peter, a pterodactyl dinosaur, was chasing an evil pterosaur. The pterosaur had attacked Peter's cave, and now Peter was chasing him to take revenge. Flying as swiftly as possible, they passed through the mountain cracks and clefts. Once Peter almost caught up with him, but missed when the pterosaur vertically flew the length of a tall tree. After hours of flying over the forest in attempts to catch the pterosaur. Peter, still furious, was now tired. He realized that he needed to use his mind more than his body to avenge the loss. Pretending to retire, out of tiredness, he took the support of a boulder. Seeing this, the pterosaur approached and said, "You'll never be as fast as I, Peter." Immediately, Peter moved and let the boulder fall on the unsuspecting pterosaur, saying. But you need to be as sharp as I, and he returned home a hero. Equal respect for all. Gary was a smart and observant dinosaur. He loved noticing the little habits of everyone around. Once Gary went to the market with his cousins. These cousins were loved and appreciated by everyone in the dino family, and. Gary wanted to be like them, so he observed them even more closely. At the market, he noticed how nicely they talked to everyone, thanking shopkeepers before leaving their shops, greeting strangers with a warm smile, holding the door for others, etc. On their way back home, a poor homeless dinosaur accidentally bumped into the trio. Gary immediately yelled at him. But the cousins stopped Gary, helped the homeless dinosaur up, and bade him goodbye with a warm smile. That was when Gary realized that just showing respect doesn't win you appreciation, but being equally respectful to all does. Gary promised to follow in his cousins' footsteps. The school project. No matter how hard all the dinosaurs 
tried, Olivia's tears just wouldn't stop. She had been crying continuously for hours and was inconsolable. Eva and Olivia were classmates. The teacher had assigned them a project together and they had been working on it for weeks. But when the project was complete, Eva told everyone that she had made it all by herself. Olivia was sad and felt betrayed. But after the hours of weeping and failing to do anything about Eva's mean actions, Olivia decided to take revenge. She knew where the project was kept and decided to destroy it, making sure Eva didn't win. The moment Olivia tore the sheets and broke the project, her teacher caught her and asked, Why did you do that? Olivia narrated her plight and the teacher punished her, saying, Two wrongs don't make right. Eva was wrong, but so are you. Thanks for watching. Do like, share, subscribe to Sahil Book House.